in this interview with Peter Woofley, the previous CEO of, of UBS Bank, we're going to explore the decisions made in his career and the successes he's had and how we approach those decisions and think about them in the future. Peter, welcome to Gibbs and, and welcome to the studio. Thank you very much. Uh, Peter, you've had a remarkably successful career with a variety of jobs. And of course, coming from Switzerland, people would expect you to be a banker, but how did you make the decision to go into business? Well, it was a tough one because my father was a very successful banker as well in Switzerland. Uh, he ran Credit Suisse at the time. And so actually, uh, I was in a dilemma. On one hand, uh, all that I heard when I grew up was about business and banking. And so obviously, I got it in my, into my kind of uh, system uh, that this is a great thing to do. And on the other hand, the least thing I wanted to do is to essentially uh, become dependent on my father and uh, work in an institution uh, where my father would have something to say and in Switzerland which is quite a small country we're quite connected uh, that was not a trivial choice to make and so right. that's why uh, I think it was it was relatively straightforward for me to go into business right. because I had a role model at home yep. it was much less uh, trivial than to find uh, the first job right if you uh, look back and, and and look back on your life um, if you'd been in Brazil, what do you think you would have done in terms of your nature and personality? Would you have done something different, do you think? I might have become either a social entrepreneur or a revolutionary. Uh -huh. uh, because I have, coming from Switzerland, I'm a liberal, I'm a freedom person. Uh, and I think we treasure, we value openness, we value engagement for the community, we value political uh, kind of co-determination. And right. so depending on where exactly I would have born, mm -hmm. uh, I might have uh, fought like a good old European liberal in the 19th century uh, okay. for freedom uh, and for justice and for fairness. Right, but being in Switzerland, of course, that wasn't that really was already issue. done by exactly. our forebears. Exactly. <laughs> And so then you joined uh, McKinsey, you went consulting for a while, it's a very well-known firm, what made you do that? It was a very difficult choice because I worked as a journalist and I actually wanted to become a journalist, uh, but uh, the newspaper I applied for was somewhat uh, kind of uh, traditional in the sense of not offering careers abroad and I wanted to go abroad. I was a, uh, a fan of uh, Latin America, of uh, Spanish culture and uh, McKinsey attracted me for, for two reasons. One is it allowed me to essentially quickly get into other culture, particularly Spanish culture and on the other hand uh, it was completely out of the influence sphere of my father. Uh, I knew that promotions uh, by McKinsey would be decided in New York and not in Zurich and that was a, an important element for me. And so you did that for, for how long? Were ten you? years, almost ten for years. For ten years. So that was a lot of experience that was very right. valuable to you. Absolutely. And then you went into the banking system and it was that in 2001 you became CEO of, of UBS. Tell us just in a nutshell the, what UBS is and its size and operations and then talk maybe a bit about the first day in the job and what was the difference between what you'd done before in, the, in UBS and being the CEO? I worked as a consultant with McKinsey, increasingly with banks uh, and uh, Swiss Bank uh, was at the time one of the three uh, big banks uh, and there was a complete transformation of the business as a result of a huge uh, real estate crisis we had in the early 90s and so banks were looking at reforming their structures and particularly into establishing more strategic oriented corporate centers and so Swiss Bank was looking for a chief financial officer uh, and that job profile somehow did not exist in Swiss banking and so they asked me to take on that job which I did. It, it fit perfectly with my skill set uh, and with my experience at McKinsey of on one hand working uh, conceptually but on the other hand also having uh, an interest in, in finance and right. Swiss bank then shortly thereafter merged with, U with union banks uh, and became what is today known as UBS and so I was uh, in that team uh, together with uh, chairman chief executive uh, and some other uh, senior colleagues in a way orchestrating and executing uh, on that on that merger. If you think back on the day you became the CEO of the group, uh, what's the difference between being a senior executive and being the CEO? If you had to pick one thing that, that changed. I must say that was a a dramatic uh, event. It was on uh, uh, Friday, uh, December 14th, 2001. I will never forget that Friday afternoon because the chairman called me in the office. It was after 9-11 and the bankruptcy of Swiss Air and UBS was in deep trouble. Uh, it was in a way dysfunctional in its leadership and this 
promotion came as a complete surprise to me. And I asked the chairman, my chairman called me in his office on Friday afternoon and he said, as of next Monday, uh, you will run the bank. And I said, well, gee, can I sleep over it? He said, yeah, of course you can, but it doesn't change anything because we need you. And the board meeting confirming this appointment is on Sunday at four o'clock in the afternoon. And so I had obviously uh, many thoughts and emotions running through my mind, but I had one uh, thought that was above everything else. And that had to do with the team. Uh, we did not discuss about money, we did not discuss about retirement plans and all sorts of terms and conditions, but we did discuss on my possibility to choose the team I would be working with uh, because of my partnership approach uh, right. to leading organizations. So that was the process of it, but what was the main difference between what you were doing before on Thursday and what you were doing on Tuesday? Well, th the main difference was to establish a team uh, and be at the helm of it and uh, driving first the rules and the guidelines according to which this team would behave uh, and would, uh, would operate. And it was also being in the forefront of uh, talking with stakeholders and initially it was uh, the market was as surprised as I was of my appointment and so there was a lot of convincing to be done. There was a lot of reputation building to be done uh, in order to basically step up uh, to that challenge. So that was the, the initial phase was essentially to uh, get into touch with investors, with clients, with uh, our own staff, uh, convince them uh, of, of the story. And then it was about a change in strategic uh, mindset because the bank until then had predominantly grown through large mergers and acquisitions. Uh, it grew uh, by acquisitions, by mergers, and with my appointment, there came a change towards organic growth, right. which was a different phase. Right. So if you look back now on, the, on those, those decisions you made, uh, because we don't think of Switzerland as major risk appetite, it's a very mature, well-established, and rational environment. Uh, how do you see risk? If you look back on your life now, and now you've written a book about looking ahead, and you're talking about inclusive growth and inclusive capitalism. As you reflect back on your life, how do you think we should look at risk? It, what's your advice to, to younger executives making their way? You've made these choices along the way. How should, how should we look at risk? What would be your message? I took substantial risks uh, in my career. Uh, I learned from success as well as from failure. Uh, and my sense is we should get used to that today's and tomorrow's world is even riskier uh, than the world that I grew up in uh, has been. And so I think we should not be close to risk. I think one of the problems of today's society is that we do have a mindset that feels that everything can be done and every risk can be managed, can be regulated away, uh, which is not the case. And I think that's why there is so much frustration because society expects uh, that you can regulate away crises. I think that's just not the case. And I guess my advice uh, to uh, young leaders would be two things. One is to, to just accept that crises and uh, risks is the norm. It's not the exception. I mean, in, in my job as a chief executive, already it was the case. I think tomorrow it will be even more the case. And I think what that means uh, as a second recommendation is to be open uh, and to basically uh, be as broad as you can in your perspectives uh, because you will never know exactly where the risk is coming from. And so for an executive, a business leader, that means uh, be empathetic, get to know civil society leaders, get to know political leaders, and don't look at them as enemies. Uh, don't look at them as people with different leadership roles with their agenda and try to get on their side to get a holistic perspective. And that's what I call inclusive leadership. That's what my book is all about. And Peter, if you look 10 years ahead, and especially in the African continent. Uh, what's your view of that in a nutshell? I'm a glass half full person. I mean, I know that in South Africa, many people are complaining and uh, critical about the development. But when you look with, at it with a bit of a distance, I think South Africa is still an incredibly impressive case of leadership, uh, of inclusive leadership. Because when you think about what could have happened 25 years ago, uh, and there are plenty of states you can look at uh, that uh, are today called failed states, I think that would have been a realistic scenario, uh, given how hurt South Africa was because of the history uh, of it. And I think what has been done uh, with leadership and with the South African people uh, of essentially collaborating and, and, and getting on an agenda, I think is just very remarkable. So I'm very optimistic. I think Africa will do very well.
Peter, thanks so much. You've had, a, you've had a very successful career, but what is fantastic at this stage is giving so much back, sharing your thoughts and experiences. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you.